Hi everyone, it is April 6, 2019. Those of you who post videos, are you getting an uptick in troll activity? I cannot believe how many comments I am deleting. Uh, the comments are really pretty uh, awful lately. Threatening, actually. Um, uh, outright threatening comments. And odd comments. I don't, I don't get what is going on. But I did receive three comments underneath this video that I posted of James Corbett's interview uh, with Patrick Wood. Why would you trust these people? <laughs> Why would you trust anyone? Um, underneath this video that I posted today, three. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what is going on? These are comments that I've never received in eight years. And they were all uh, insinuating that I stole James Corbett's work by posting his video on my channel. One person said, oh, I didn't know James Corbett had another channel. Another one uh, was, well, I like the video, but don't think it's fair that you posted James Corbett's video on your channel. And the other one I can't remember. but. All right, uh, let me just show you something. And this goes for anyone who is asking anyone who posts videos, if you can repost their video before you even ask, go to the description box, click show more, scroll down, and you'll see license. And there are two choices that you can uh, choose from standard or Creative Commons. Creative Commons attribution license reuse allowed. Creative Commons means you don't have to ask. Go ahead and repost. James Corbett has been a Creative Commons guy forever. I've posted a lot of James Corbett's uh, videos on my channel. Creative Commons. This is, by the way, his uh, his channel. Corbett Report. Creative Commons. Reuse allowed. And I wish everybody would put uh, down Creative Commons underneath their video because we're at war. And guess what? There's a lot of casualties that we have already uh, experienced in this war and there's going to be a lot of casualties coming and I uh, the information is very important and asking permission well I have asked permission and I don't get any response or you know I'll get a response a week later um, time ran out and information needs to be circulated as quickly as possible so I do wish everybody had Creative Commons. Um, I guess those who monetize don't do Creative Commons, but James Corbett does. So please work on those presumptions. I, I, I mean, to accuse someone of stealing somebody's work, how do you know, even if he didn't have Creative Commons, how do you know I didn't? request a repost of videos of James Corbett's and he said go ahead um, people just fling out their accusations as fact you know if you're concerned that I'm stealing somebody's work why don't you just ask all right so Creative Commons you know for those of you who did not know it means you don't even have to ask permission now I want to show you this. Max Egan has been banned for 90 days. He cannot post. And that has happened to me. These punishments coming from Big Daddy YouTube, Big Daddy Google, Big Mommy YouTube, um, because of his posting on Christchurch. I'll let you listen to a few minutes of this interview on an Anarchist's channel. 
Um, well, let me just say, we are in a fight for our life and truth on a daily basis is getting snuffed out everywhere. This is very real, guys. Just imagine a day that I believe is uh, in the not too distant future where you will not be able to get any information from any channel on YouTube that is not authoritative. In other words, mainstream media. How's that going to be for you? It's not going to be very good. So this is Max Egan. Uh, Christchurch was a false flag event. It's not what they're telling us it was, but by saying it's false flag does not mean it was fake. Does not mean people died. People have uh, been blurring the lines between fake and false flag, what it means, you know. Um, from the evidence that I can see from the video and, and my analysis of the video, and I've gone through it frame by frame, people died at this event. It was a real event, but it's not what they're telling us. It wasn't a lone gunman. It wasn't a single shooter. And the video actually reveals that there were multiple players at the event. It shows the handlers. You can see that there were other people there helping him reveal on the video but as soon as this video is released within hours there are reports coming out saying this is all fake CGI shell casings no bodies all crisis actors all this stuff these details that you cannot prove you will argue back and forth about all you want but it's damage control so that you won't look at the other details the video is showing you and these reports that it was all fake and it was all crisis actors were actually coming out within hours because they they really got caught with their hands in the cookie jar with this uh, shooters video he was incredibly incompetent, this shooter. He was a real klutz, and he got a lot of extra players and a lot of extra stuff on the video that they really do not want you to see. And that's what I want people focusing on all the stuff, whether it was fake, whether it was this, whether it was that. And not only that, it makes the truth community, the independent media, look like a bunch of uh, conspiracy theorists who just pushing fake news. So this is going to be used to shut us down if we're not very careful. And it's a huge opportunity for us because they've been caught with their hands square in the cookie jar with this video. They really, really blew it with this shooter's video. There's just so much revealed on it, Jeff. And because I'm reporting that, they've just shut me down. They've shut down my channel. I can't upload for three months. I actually appealed and I said, well, what's going on? Because the video they shut down, I mean, I uploaded a video and I went through point by point all the things that I found wrong with the Christchurch shooting. And then I thought, well, they've already got one strike against my channel. They'll probably give me another one for this. So I'm better off just deleting this video. It's already on BitChute now. So I'll just delete it and I'll upload a little one minute clip and let people know why I've deleted it and where they can go and find it. And they flagged that one minute clip which was me talking and had a spinning yin and yang sign. They flagged that clip for having inappropriate content. I mean, this is the spinning yin and yang sign and it's spoken dialogue. I think they were just really, really pissed off that they didn't get to flag the previous clip that I deleted it before they could flag it. So they flagged this one. So I appealed that and uh, I looked at my channel this morning and I'm, get, I'm getting mixed reports from their channel because I can go to the dashboard page and it says uploads are disabled for this channel. But then I can click upload and it says I can upload 15 minutes. So I don't know, I'm going to try tomorrow and see if I can just upload a 15 minute clip anyway, just to let people know that my, my actual show is going to be on my old channel, which is called AOD Scarecrow, which you can also find on YouTube. So, so this is always... Okay, so this is what is going on. Now, all right, I, I don't want to argue whether it was fake CGI, uh, false flag. That's not the point of this video that I am making right now. Uh, a lot of people, um, I have already seen videos where, oh my God, Max Egan, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's a shill, he's, he's working for the other side because his analysis of the video seems to differ from other people's analysis of the video and Max Egan has not come out and stated that it is fake. He has stated it's a false flag. Um, so, yeah, look, I haven't analyzed the video, um, but, you know, to immediately jump to a conclusion about somebody because somebody else has a different take on an event 
and calling it a false flag, pointing out uh, the the inaccuracies of the official narrative, how you can claim that they're a shill because they're pointing out all of what is wrong with this official narrative. I, I don't get it, but it was really remarkable to see how many people were coming out claiming that Max Egan, okay, he's like um, Blackstone intelligence. I uh, I think you really need to reevaluate that. Uh, so many people just jump to a conclusion within a couple of seconds, and boom, that's it. And then they're you know leaving comments underneath videos and claiming this person's a show and that person's a show. That only works to divide us further. Um, so. You know, it's okay if somebody has a different take on an event. They have analyzed a video and they come up with a different opinion about the event. It does not mean that working for the other side. Now, do you think that that was appropriate for YouTube? to, well, punish Max Egan. How dare you have an opinion about an event that took place that affects certainly the people directly in New Zealand, ordinary people, an event that affects them because, well, they're getting ready to confiscate guns. They immediately pass this legislation for gun control and they want uh, New Zealanders to give up their assault rifles. Um, you know, with every mass shooting event, what happens? Government officials get to work and they get that legislation passed immediately and you have to give up your property. Okay, what is wrong with someone who is not a government official, not a mainstream media reporter, commenting on the event. And that's how we used to operate. People would talk about events and they would um, they would express their opinion. People give commentary. What is wrong with this? Nothing. Nothing. It's called free speech. YouTube doesn't like that. YouTube doesn't like it. Because YouTube, despite an awful lot of people believing that this is a private corporation, that Google is a private corporation, they can do whatever they want, untrue. And I will show you how untrue that is. Here. High impact. Netflix. just posted this video a couple of hours ago if you just search for this right here I don't even want to say it because the more you say it the more you're going to capture the YouTube algorithm and put yourself in the crosshairs of Google Incorporated Wow okay so now people don't even want to say words that might get their video taken down might get a punishment 90 days you can't you can't post or you can only post a 15 minute video and for Max Egan well he posts hour long videos um, it's a very very big deal this is this is the world, this is evidence of the world turning tyrannical, turning fast into a tyranny worldwide. So, 
I'm not smart enough to not say these words. You know, and I don't want these people to change who I am. So now we have to be very, very careful what we post, what we say. Are we not obeying their dictates? Because we can't get any of this stopped. We now have to obey. Oh, boy. That's a very scary thought to me and a scary practice because it only leads to more tyranny to more people being afraid. Um, well, here. And get yourself banned or shadow banned or completely terminated. But look, I typed this in on a YouTube search. And what do you get? CBS News, Guardian, Guardian, ABC, ABC, Guardian, CBS, Guardian, Fox News, Global News. Washington Post, Global News, it's all mainstream sources that deal with this event that I'm going to try to minimize saying. Okay, how about... All right, so he goes through several examples. You put in the search bar, and I said this in a video, I don't know, a couple of days ago. I said, it seems that when I try to do a search on YouTube, pages and pages of mainstream media news despite what I the words the search words so it was not too long ago and I'm sure that a lot of you remember when you would put in whether it was Sandy Hook or whatever the event was um, you might come up with a couple of mainstream media but mostly it was the individuals, the real you of the YouTube. And you could find so many people posting, breaking down events, uh, small channels, big channels, all reporting on the event. Now it is extremely difficult. And actually it was the video uh, where I was saying that it was Max Egan. I put in Max Egan, Christchurch, um, and I think Crow House, Christchurch, and didn't even come up with his channel. All I got was pages of mainstream media. I had to go to his channel to see the video. So, uh, the measures that they have been taking throughout the years to get us put into a very tight corner on YouTube where almost nobody goes anymore, shadow banning, uh, punishing, and, um, and what is it that they do with the algorithms, with anything that is considered a conspiracy? theory. Uh, they don't recommend those videos anymore. So we're going down. We are going down. And I so wish that we lived close by, uh, that we could, you know, have some kind of support network in real life. Because for many of us, this is the only support that we have in the cyber world. Well, we're losing it. We're losing it. So, is it a surprise that now all we're finding is mainstream media on YouTube? It's not. And I posted a video, a lot of people posted a video on this. YouTube investing $25 million in journalism and pushing authoritative sources. And this was last year. Google-owned service, which has been beset by accusations that it allows conspiracy theories and terrorist content to flourish, will promote videos from vetted sources on its top news and breaking news sections to make it easier to find quality news. Quality news. 
mainstream media news. So it's not a surprise to me to see so many mainstream media YouTube videos coming up. It's a surprise to me that when I do searches, that's all I'm finding. Okay. Um, throughout the years, there has been a big push to get rid of all of us. Do you remember 2013? Oh boy, yes. Diane Feinstein, um, the the whole controversy of the shield law, the shield law protections for journalists, uh, which gives reporters protection against um, being forced to disclose their sources or disclose confidential information. And this came about because of a leak, which I can't remember what leak it was, but Diane Feinstein, they wanted to pass legislation defining who was a journalist and it knocked out uh, independent journalists, bloggers, YouTubers. It only uh, defined as a journalist those um, Cat is coughing. Hang on. So it knocked out pretty much everybody except for mainstream media reporters. Diane Feinstein, you know, didn't think that it went far enough. She wanted to define very, in a restrictive, uh, give it a restrictive definition of a real reporter, which essentially was um, those who were salaried in, you know, some uh, organization that published news, but it would, it essentially knocked out independent bloggers, citizen journalists to be protected under the law. But there were an awful lot of independent um, investigative journalists that had websites and they were known as journalists, but they weren't salaried. So there were a lot of problems. Fortunately, this law did not go through, um, did not get passed. But they have been working on trying to get rid of all of us. You know, they, Congress introduced federal shield bills in May both ironically named Free Flow of Information Act of 2013 that arguably would exclude bloggers, freelancers, and other non-salaried journalists from protection. Um, but they've been doing this for many years. You know, their hostility towards all of us. They want to get rid of all of us. Why? Because we don't go along with the official narrative which very often is a lie. They want the lie maintained at all cost. That's why we're losing our freedom of speech. That's why YouTube um, decides, hey, Max, sorry, but we're going to smack you down because we didn't like your opinion, your commentary on Christchurch, your analysis on that video, so you can't post for 90 days. And that actually happened to me. And then when I finally was able to come back, Kafka Winston World was terminated a week later. So I hope that doesn't happen to Max again. Now, there's an awful lot of people who claim YouTube, Google, it's a private corporation and it can do whatever it wants. No, it's not. This is government here. This is government. So Google's turn, uh, turn, wow. True origin partly lies in CIA and NSA research grants for mass surveillance, U.S. intelligence community, worked closely with Silicon Valley 
in an effort to track citizens in cyberspace. And Google is at the heart of that origin story. Some of the research that led to Google's ambitious creation was funded and coordinated by a research group established by the intelligence community to find ways to track individuals and groups online. Central Intelligence Agency, NSA, National Security Agency, began reaching out to the scientists at American universities who were creating this supercomputing revolution. The internet itself was created because of an intelligence effort. We were not handed the internet because, oh, you know, DARPA, CIA, NSA, our military just love to give us toys. Give the children some toys. Give them a gift. No. This was all created to get all of our personal information. No joke. So, the Internet itself was created because of an intelligence effort in the 70s. The agency responsible for developing emerging, emerging technologies for military, intelligence, and national security purposes, DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency linked four supercomputers to handle massive data transfers. DARPA is behind the Internet. Mid-90s, the intelligence community was seeding funding to the most promising supercomputing efforts across academia, guiding the creation of efforts to make massive amounts of information useful for both the private sector as well as the intelligence community. They funded these computer scientists through an unclassified, highly compartmentalized program that was managed for the CIA and the NSA by large military and intelligence contractors. It was called the Massive Digital Data Systems Project. MDDS was introduced to several dozen leading computer scientists at Stanford, Caltech, MIT, Car Carnegie Mellon, Harvard, and others. In a white paper that described what the CIA, NSA, DARPA, and other agencies hoped to achieve. These agencies, while not directly funding, they got their MDDS and InQtel, which is like a the CIA, it's kind of like the CIA Silicon Valley, InQtel, which funds startup companies, and InQtel is essentially the CIA. So the CIA doesn't directly fund, but it has its agencies fund directly startup companies. And a lot of these social media platforms, Facebook, Google, uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, you track the history and you will find funding from our government. Now, what does that mean? What it means is our government, CIA, NSA, DARPA, went to these institutions looking for employees to create what they wanted. They hired these computer scientists to create what they wanted. That means Google, Facebook, because the same is true with Facebook, um, is government. It's not a private. Sorry, you, you if you want to twist around the history because it works for you to say that this is a private corporation, go right ahead. But our intelligence agencies 
were behind the creation of not only the internet but Google and Facebook um, and it still is so here Sergey Brin, Larry Page, Computer Science, Boy Wonders, 1995, one of the first and most promising MDDS grants went to a computer science research team at Stanford University with a decade-long history of working with NSF and DARPA grants. The primary objective of this grant was query optimization of very complex queries that are described using the query flocks approach. A second grant, DARPA NSF grant, most closely associated with Google's origin, was part of a coordinated effort to build a massive digital library using the internet as its backbone. Both grants funded research by two graduate students who were making rapid advances in web page ranking as well as tracking user Queries, future Google co-founders, Bryn and Page. The research by Bryn and Page under these grants became the heart of Google. You can call it a grant, but I'm going to call it Bryn Page, employees of our government, and our government paid them to create Google. So the grants became the heart of Google. People using search functions in to find precisely what they wanted. The intelligence community, however, saw a slightly different benefit. Could the network be organized so efficiently that individual users could be uniquely identified and tracked? And sure enough, that's what happened. Human beings and like-minded groups who might pose a threat to national security can be uniquely identified online before they do harm. This explains why the intelligence community found Brin's and Page's research efforts so appealing. Prior to this time, the CIA largely used human intelligence out in the field. But now, they got it right here, Cyberworld. Two intelligence community managers charged with leading the program met regularly with Bryn. The grants allowed Bryn and Page to do government work. MDDS research effort has never been part of Google's origin story. They hid it. Instead, every Google creation story only mentions just one federal grant, NSF DARPA Digital Libraries Grant. Only one. Really? No. There have been many. Google has said in the past that it was not funded or created by the CIA. For instance, when stories circulated in 2006 that Google had received funding from the intelligence community for years to assist in counterterrorism efforts, the company told Wired magazine, the statements related to Google are completely untrue. And guess what? Google can delete a lot of evidence <laughs> that points to the CIA creation of Google. Did the CIA directly fund the work of Bryn and Page? No. But were Bryn and Page researching precisely what the NSA and the CIA and the intelligence community hoped for, assisted by their grants? Absolutely. Otherwise, they would not have been given the grants, the MDDS grants. They did what the CIA, NSA wanted them to do. Government employees, no, not entrepreneurs. This is not a private corporation. So there's a lot more... Um, a lot more information. You know, when asked, the, the biggest technology and communications companies from Verizon and AT&T to Google, Facebook, and Microsoft say that they never deliberately and proactively offer up their vast databases on their customers to federal security and law enforcement agencies. They say they only respond to subpoenas and requests. 
public records show that there is a treadmill of constant requests that could undermine the intent behind this privacy promise. According to the data request records that the companies make available to the public in the most recent reporting period between 2016 and 2017, local, state, and federal government authorities seeking information related to national security, counterterrorism, or criminal concerns issued more than 260,000 subpoenas in one year, court orders, warrants, other legal requests to Verizon, more than 250,000 such requests to AT&T, nearly 24,000 subpoenas, search warrants, um, and court orders to Google, direct national security or counterterrorism requests are a small fraction of this overall group of requests. But the Patriot Act legal process has now become so routinized, and that's the, the, the requests are under the Patriot Act, they've become so routinized that the companies each have a group of employees who simply take care of the stream of requests. Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of them. Direct ties to government because this is a government platform. The internet, government, collaboration between the intelligence community and big commercial science and tech companies has been widely successful when national security agencies need to identify and track people and groups. They know where to turn and do so frequently. And that was the goal in the beginning. Love Mustangs. Exclusive. Google CIA invest in future of web monitoring. Ah, yes, investment arms of the CIA and Google are both backing a company that monitors the web in real time and says it uses that information to predict the future. Recorded future is what it's called. That's the company. Recorded future. And it scours tens of thousands of websites, blogs, and Twitter accounts to find the relationships between people, organizations, actions, and incidents, both present and still to come. And they do it in real time. So, not the very first time Google has done business with America's spy agencies. Google is a spy agency. So, you can read all of government connections with Google in this article and how the US spy agencies through NQTEL have invested in numbers uh, in a number of firms to help them better find that information visible technologies crawls over half a million websites a day scraping more than a million posts and conversations taking place on blogs YouTube, Twitter, and Amazon. And more and more and more. Look, um, the contracts that the CIA, NSA, Pentagon have with Amazon and Google, but apparently Google has decided well, this was last year. Google ditches contract with U.S. military after employee revolt. They're not ditching anything. Google is military. Google is CIA, NSA. They don't ditch anything. They're just putting it out on, this, in, in, on the Internet. Okay, fine. We'll ditch it after thousands of Google workers had signed a letter asking leadership to end its involvement in a Pentagon pilot program known as Project Maven that uses artificial intelligence to decipher video footage and could be used to improve targeted drone strikes. We believe that Google should not be in the business of war. Okay. Does it mean, does this, does this mean that Google now is no longer involved in Project Maven? Or did Google just um, get it off radar because I think that's what has happened. So social media is a tool of the CIA, Facebook, Google, 
other social media uses, um, used to spy on people. The CBS News actually published an article in 2011, social media is a tool of the CIA, seriously. According to CBS, the CIA is using Facebook, Twitter, Google, and other social media to spy on people. Insidious relationship between the CIA, the search engines, social media, and major advertising conglomerates. You don't need to wear a tin... This was in... Uh, this was CBS reporting this. You don't need to wear a tinfoil hat to believe that the CIA is using Facebook, Twitter, Google, and other social media to spy on people. That's because the CIA publishes a helpful list of press releases, and you can't get it anymore. Uh, that's been memory hold on all the social media ventures it sponsors via its technology investment arm in QTEL. Yeah. And advertisers on the internet in bed with the CIA. So, look at this, okay? You got Google, you got YouTube, you got, um, well, Twitter, you got all of um, these social media platforms that you have to agree to their terms. If you don't agree to their terms and their privacy terms and all this, then you don't get to use their service. So people don't read it. They agree, and I'm one of them. Agree, okay. But what are you agreeing to? You're agreeing to either Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Google, YouTube, whatever. You're agreeing to allow your personal information to be handed over to advertisers. And everybody is like, oh, well, they're just wanting to, you know, sell you something. So you go to a website and you do some search on, you know, some type of clothing or whatever. And then suddenly you see ads pop up for what you were searching for. What's the big deal? The advertisers are turning over your personal information. CIA, NSA, that's the big deal. Spying on individuals is a highly profitable undertaking for private companies on contract to the CIA, NSA, Homeland Security. CBS report suggests in no uncertain terms that the personal information pertaining to millions of Americans collected by one of the world's largest ad agencies is sold to the CIA. Yeah. Okay. They certainly have us trapped right here. We all look at this screen. Whether it's your cell phone, your computer, we're all looking at a screen. This was the purpose to spy on everybody, to, I mean, it was brilliant, um, but to collect all of our personal information and those we talk to, uh, those we email, the connections that we have, the associations that we have, our responses to particular events, all of it connected, uh, all of it collected and stored for use in the future. You know, recorded future. It's not a private company. And that's why it is very upsetting to see, well, a whole lot of people believe that it's well, they can do whatever they want. You know, the U.S. government contracts with Google. Um, has a lot of contracts with Google. And Amazon. And Facebook. So, when you have a contract with our U.S. government, 
our U.S. government, whatever agency, is contracting with a private corporation, they could put in a condition, abide by the Constitution, freedom of speech. Why aren't they? Because our government doesn't want us to have freedom of speech. So, Max, I'm sorry this has happened to you, but it's going to be happening more and more and more. And yeah, I don't think it's too long before it's going to be very, very difficult to find any truth. And yes, I regard truth as sacrosanct, okay? I do. I'm very upset <laughs> uh, watching truth be killed off. And those who speak the truth, watching them get degraded. And called names. You know, this Alex Jones bit. <laughs> And now, let me pull up that article. I know it's long, this video, but I'm just going to pull it up. Hang on. The public shaming of Wolfgang Halbig. Alex Jones relied on conspiracy theorists for Sandy Hook hoax. Yeah, New York Post. Now this guy is so, uh, I'm sorry, it is my opinion that he doesn't give a shit what people think of him. Um, psychopaths don't. And this is deliberate, by the way. Oh, he didn't just say something in a deposition and then suddenly it's all over. I was undergoing a psychosis, believing that Sandy Hook was fake and uh, it was real. And then pulling in Wolfgang Halbig, this is what happens when you speak the truth. And it doesn't matter. When you are speaking the truth to anyone that doesn't want to hear the truth, they will attack. And they will do a number on you. And it's very, it, it, it's very upsetting to see what they are doing to Wolfgang Halbig in the process. Um, so apparently Alex Jones had said Wolfgang Halbig bombarded the InfoWars host with at least 4,000 emails which Jones relied on to conclude that the school shooting may have been staged. It's a lot, yeah, that's what Jones admitted. So how they got the 4,000 emails, don't know. Um, the link emerged in Jones's response to a lawsuit filed against him by the family of a six-year-old. The link between Jones and Halbig. Now the only link was Alex Jones interviewed Wolfgang Halbig. Um, so here, Jones regularly said the source of his information was going off on what Mr. Halbig said. Looking at those emails, you wouldn't agree with me that that man is a raving lunatic? The lawyer asked Jones bluntly. A raving lunatic for asking questions. You're a raving lunatic now for asking questions about an event. Jones said he seemed very credible and put together earlier, earlier on. However, Jones, who also admitted going through a personal psychosis. What the hell does that mean? You're either psychotic or not. He seemed to get agitated about four years ago, three years ago, Jones said. I can't stand this. Halbig stuck by his controversial views about whether children actually died. He said, I can't tell whether they died or did not. But for six years, I have made public records requests to prove whether this happened or not, and they have refused to give me those documents. I wanted 
for once and for all to know whether Sandy Hook happened. And he maintains that he's a victim and he's right. He's right. Why am I being attacked for Sandy Hook? I'm trying to get answers. If you prove me wrong, then I will apologize profusely and I will check myself into a mental hospital. But it doesn't matter because reasonable, rational, it doesn't matter anymore. Facts and evidence being reasonable and rational have all gone by the wayside. Now it's just mindless attacks to shut people up who are simply asking questions and doing some research, digging in to find out uh, if you know these official narratives are in fact the truth, you know. But you come up with so many inconsistencies in these official narratives and you want to get to the answer. But then you're made into a lunatic. This does not sound like a lunatic. If you prove me wrong, I will apologize profusely. But nobody's proved him wrong. Nobody's answered those very pertinent questions that he had in regards to Sandy Hook. And I've posted too many videos just in the last week, not too many, but two, <laughs> showing evidence. We want answers. We're not lunatics. We're not conspiracy theorists who are uh, psychotic. We're not mentally ill. It's in fact these people who are doing the character assassination. They're mentally ill. So everything has flipped now. You know, what we used to consider mentally ill is now considered well-adjusted. And what we used to regard admirably intelligence, critical thinking, research, weighing the evidence, coming up with the questions, um, and, and speaking the truth. Now it's regard, regarded as a mental illness and it was not a accident that this guy said, hey, I was undergoing a psychosis. What do I know? I was uh, mentally ill at the time because he wants everybody to look at us as mentally ill. What a world this is. What an unbelievable uh, turn that has taken place. This is the world that we're living in. Well, we are the only ones who can be the, uh, you know, it's kind of like the brother's keeper of the truth. Of the truth. It doesn't matter. We've got to speak it. No matter what the punishment is, we've got to speak it. Otherwise, it dies really fast, really fast. All links are below. Hope you have a nice Sunday. Ciao guys.